never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a pain is made Never seen a cancer death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change is made Hey, everybody. I want what $2. Is, you want $2. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're the big winner today. Hey, what's up, Big C? It's time for another podcast. Drinking at your slim, keep picking slim chicken, whatever it is. Cup. I like the hungry man. I like the How hungry you doing? Man, you got the brand stanza, as always, looking over your shoulder. That's right. I got Mr. Sean Michelle who brought us in with some sweet tunes, rocking our faces off there to the beginning. And he's just sitting in the Delta in a, in a field somewhere with his guitar and a lovely Like beard. it's completely normal. Like it's, it's, that is normal for him. That's what he does. He's, <laughs> if you know Sean, that's what he does. He just sits in fields. He's probably somewhere in the Delta region right now, just sitting in the yeah, field. Well, actually, he's a guitar in Nashville and got a baby on the way. So, oh. uh, Living the life. Well, man, how you doing, Clint? Has it been a good week for you? How's it it is, things in the It's been a Clint's great world? week. Um, actually, you know, this morning we Robert, I he he came on Marco Polo and he and I could tell he was at Splash Car Wash, which is a rock throw from my job. So it's like, hey Bobby, if you're at the one by my job, will you bring me a tea? And son of a gun, if he did not bring me a tea. So wow. I'm once again, I mean, it cost him a dollar uh, eleven to go to come and go and get a tea if you've got the room. But you know what? I'm once again, I'm a paid podcaster, baby. That's right, baby. Woo-hoo. Living the life. Hometown Living roofing. Life. Hometown All roofing. All right. <laughs> Keeping us uh Hydrated. Right, me at fish dinner last week and you a tea this week. I, I'm still up on you. Yeah, you are, no, but I don't geez. care because I love tea. So. That's right. <laughs> You know, a few years ago, I lost a bunch of weight, and I one of the things I did was I quit drinking soda, and so pretty much I went to just drinking unsweet tea, and I put the Splenda in there, mm-hmm. and or sweeten a little. I don't care. I'll mix them. I'm weird, but all those all those sweeteners that give nice I mean, growth dude, on the brain. I will be honest with you. If that's what finally kills me, uns uh, sweet and low, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's what gets me. That's what gets me. I've come. All right. So I've what's come your to favorite? With it. Is it sweet and low equal, or what, like what's Splenda. the yellow one? Splenda. Splenda. I like the Splenda. Splenda. Okay. Now, see, my grandma always did unsweet tea, but she would sweeten it with sweet and low. Yeah. And and so that's mine. That's if I go artificial sweetener, I go sweet and low. They they make this new stuff called Swerve, and Mom's really big on it. Um, yeah. Anna, Anna doesn't like it. Says it tastes like got a little toothpaste aftertaste to it. But oh, okay, I don't know. I, <clears throat> I do not know. I think it was Steva that used to be the stuff that people would get from Mexico for a long time. They did like yeah. There was like underground railroads bringing it up here. To- she she likes this uh, st- monk fruit sweetener. They sell it at um at um Whole Foods. You can get it on Amazon too, but it's supposed to be you know keto yeah. friendly so well there, down there here in camden we don't know what a whole foods is <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I was yeah. like man i had one of the bougiest sundays a, a while back because i went and ate breakfast at panera bread and then cut over to whole foods and bought yeah, some steak so i'm yeah. like i'm you're talking I, a whole new I'm not, for us south arkansas boys you're talking a whole new language man i'm not even in that tax bracket like they should have kicked me out like for like, us that's <laughs> I went through the drive-thru at Andy's and got a bit sausage biscuit, maybe biscuit and gravy. And then I went to the Piggly Wiggly right down the road from it. That's our bougie Saturday right there. Now, well, hey, man, go we got to talk about our holy snikey moments for the week. We agree, we agree on what it is. Look, the SEC tournament in basketball and in baseball 
it's almost become pointless. Unless yeah. you're a team that's trying to get in the final 64. For those teams, it's a big deal, okay? But for Arkansas, we were already going to host a regional in baseball. We were already the number one seed in the country, right? We've been number yep. one almost all year. It meant nothing for us. And what do we do? We win the whole darn thing, boys. And, and they wanted to win it, too. There, make no mistake about that. Look, Van Horn put his lineup in smart, okay? Once again, Van Horn proves he's one of the greatest coaches out there. You got a guy like Goodhart that's 0 for 30 or whatever he was. I mean, he was 0 for 20-something anyway. You put him at leadoff in the tournament. You put a guy that's in a slump at the position that may get more hits than any other player in the game, okay? Okay. What he's doing by saying that, he's saying, we're going to get you out of this, and I believe in you. And Goodhart came through with a couple decent hits. He's still not all the way out of it, but he's going to be a lot – he's a lot better place than he was before the tournament. And then he the – fir- the game against Vandy brings out cops with three innings left. The best pitcher in the game today. Brings him out there. And Clint, homeboy dominated. Didn't throw one fastball. Did not throw one fastball. Nothing but cutters and curves. Yeah. The whole thing. And had the, the, the what was in, and, and <laughs> 22 of his 30 pitches were strikes. So he wasn't getting on the swing at some junk out of the zone. He was getting on the swing at good pitches, and they just couldn't hit them. And, and the looks on their faces, Clint, as these Vanderbilt – we're talking about Vanderbilt. Yeah. One well, of the best no, teams in the nation. Number four. Number two most of the year. Number two most of the year. They're walking back to the dugout after he gets through with them, and, and they don't know what to say. The look on their faces is like, huh, this guy's killing us. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, don't, I, don't I, I can't. What do I do with that? What do I do look, with it? Look like you guarding Keith Carter. Like I'm, I'm exactly. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It is just better than me. <laughs> Clint, there was one guy that literally swung the bat out of his hand. It landed behind the umpire, and he just looked down like I, I don't know. I I, <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands right now. <laughs> I just I, I just do the bat. I just. <laughs> I can't hit it with it in my hand. I'm going to try it out inside of my hand. But it was the most dominant baseball three innings I think I've ever seen, especially in college. Now, there's some, there's some you know, you can argue some with the pros or whatever. And I could probably think back and watching some Roger Clemens and Randy Johnson, Nolan Ryan, some of those guys. But, Clint, it, it was amazing. The only thing I can compare cops to right now is Mariano Rivera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a time when Rivera would come out. Yeah. Inner Sandman would come on the on the speakers. Yeah. You know, like this game's this game's over. Yeah. Like it's it's over. Um, and and you mean, knew exactly. And and he was only going to throw like two pitches. Yeah, I mean he threw he the cutter. The, he was going to throw the cutter pretty much the whole time. Yeah, I mean, and that's and, and that's what cops. That's what the cops did. You know, I've said the one thing, and we've talked about this when we had baseball bow on, about how, you know, one thing that concerns me is the lack of starting pitching. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I mean, name – I mean, once this guy comes out of the dugout, and they'll put him in in the sixth inning. He doesn't care. He'll let him throw 60, 70 pitches. He just – Well, that's the thing. He can can do it. Clint, he threw three innings and threw 30 pitches. Yeah, no, that's – one inning, one inning, he finished it off. With the, the first inning, he came in. He came in, and he had two people on, and an old two count, and a two o count. Yeah. And he finished the inning with eight pitches. Yeah. And, and we've <laughs> hey, and we've got to mention we've got to mention Connor Nolan. Connor Nolan coming yes. there and shut the door on Ole Miss. Yep. That was the. Um, 
Uh, guys, and we also, we've got this big regional in Fayetteville. We're playing um, – Nebraska, I mentioned on the yeah. podcast a few weeks ago, who's holding, who's heard of Nebraska baseball since Van Horn left? Well, now we all have because they're yeah. coming to Fayetteville. Uh, right. Northeastern, I don't know who that is. Out of Boston. And the uh, juggernaut. Or near Boston. The juggernaut. <laughs> the New Jersey Institute of Technology. <laughs> that um, sounds like a made-up school from like a – like an Adam Sandler movie or something. So no, that sounds like a movie. <laughs> that sounds like one of them things that they advertise on. I'm pointing at the TV um, yeah. that you can't see off the screen. Yeah. Um, that sounds like one like like one that advertises like, do you want a future in welding? <laughs> sure. Come, to sure. New, come to New Jersey. Not that we're, like, la- we're laughing good, there going down. No, welding is a good trade, you know, but you can yes. go learn it at the New Jersey. I figure them in art because I went to Arkansas Tech. We've got to be sister sister schools or something. <laughs> sure, sure. You know, I don't, <laughs> sure. I don't, I don't know. But man. here's the but, thing, Clint. But here's the thing I'm worried about. We have the best fans in the do. world. And and we're playing in the regionals. We've got the number one team. We're hosting it. It's going to be a packed house. But here's what concerns me, Clint. This has got me seriously worried. Talk Have you stuff. seen what fans are doing in professional sports right now? Oh, they're nuts. They don't know how to act. Spitting Clint, on they, people, they've throwing gone, bottles. They've gone crazy. They're throwing bottles at Russell Westbrook or popcorn or what? I don't know. I, I, mean, I haven't read a lot of the articles, and I'm just watching highlights on SportsCenter and stuff like that and, they're, <clears throat> and reading tweets about it. Oh, my goodness, people. And then, like, in a baseball game in Pittsburgh, was, I think it was Pittsburgh. I may be wrong there, but. Like these women are video fighting in the stands. Look, Arkansas, Arkansas, Arkansas. Come on, man. Arkansas, look, look, please. I know there may be, maybe some of y'all that end up going up there that watch this. I don't know, but if your friends go, whatever it is, encourage them. Act like human beings. <laughs> Act like you got a raisin. Act like. Look, the new don't be throwing stuff at some third baseman from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Y'all will mess around, <laughs> make Ron Artest come out of retirement. That's, That's right. what's gonna happen. He's gonna be up in the show. Right. You know, one of my favorite stories about that. Um, oh, what's his name? Steven Jackson. They yeah. said he was sitting in the locker room after the game, and Ron Artest, you know, after the malice in the palace was like, You think we're gonna get in trouble? Yeah. Just, what are you talking about? Are we going to get yeah. in trouble? We're going to be yeah. lucky we don't get fired. <laughs> yeah. Ran into the stands to beat up fans. Yeah, he's like, I, I had it. Like, I don't, I don't know if Detroit's where I'd want to do that. <laughs> but no, seriously, people, please. This is a, this is a uh, public service announcement for the Big C and Bigger T podcast. The more you know, the less you care, the more you care, whatever it is. Please. Act right up in Fayetteville this weekend. We don't want to be leading off Sports Center because some guy with a hog hat on, or what's the when when we get the bases loaded, they put the beer mug hat on or something. Because he's seen throwing a beer bottle at the at New Jersey Institute of Technology's uh, relief pitcher. Okay. No, just say no. Guys, even if we lose, it's not that bad. That's right. It's not worth it. It's not, not worth, worth it. it. Not All worth right, Clint. We got something a little different this week for our main what we're, our main topic, okay? Um, everybody has opinions on things, and, and me and you yeah. have we, – we're opinionated people. And sometimes those opinions are very unpopular. There are opinions that people would say, you know what, that's just stupid. And I get that quite a bit. Okay. And uh we're gonna we've picked a few of our top unpopular opinions that we think are um, unpopular to a lot of people. We haven't shared with each other what they are. They I had no idea. Yeah, Clint has no idea what I'm gonna talk about. I have no idea what Clint's so I may agree with Clint, okay, and, and that, that could happen, me and Clint been friends for a long time we're a lot alike we may agree but there's also some things we disagree on 
So we don't even know what they're going to be. We don't know uh, if they have to do with sports or entertainment or whatever, but we're going to share our unpopular opinions. Okay. Um, that we, and just kind of get each other's response to those. Okay. Now in doing this, we want your response too. So listen, y'all, we've been asking for comments. We haven't got the comments we want to see. We want your comments. Tell us that we're stupid or why our opinions, like our ideas won't work or don't work or whatever, or, or how we're wrong. We can take it. We're big boys. I can take it. Okay. So here's the deal. Clint, you're going to start us off. Share with me your, your unpopular opinion, and I'll give you my response. Okay. To what you have to now, say. I'm going to start off with this one. This one, I don't think, I think you may actually agree with, because I, I called Wesley on the way here and I told him some unpopular opinions and he, he actually agreed with me on this one. This was a Facebook status a little bit ago. So if you read my Facebook status, you'll get it. Rob Lowe and John Stamos are completely interchangeable. You can take John Stamos out of any movie or any show and put Rob Lowe in that spot and vice versa. And no one would know. You may have to tweak the part a little bit. Like instead of like being an Elvis guy's Uncle Jesse, um, Rob Lowe could be in an Oasis cover band or something. But for the most part, you could do it and not really change anything. Okay. I Part of me was, and my first response is, okay, yeah, I agree with you. Right. But then I'm a big Parks and Rec fan. And I really I enjoyed Rob Lowe's character on Parks and Rec. And I don't think Stamos could pull that off. I think he could have. I don't think he could have. Yep. And I don't think I don't think he could pull off Rob Lowe's. I don't think he could pull off Rob Lowe's uh, on on Tommy Boy. I think he could have. Because I think Rob Lowe, uh, Uncle Jesse, I want to call him Uncle Jesse says Stamos, <laughs> has a natural humility that comes about it. Just looking at him, he still he still looks like a tool, but Rob Lowe looks like Rob Lowe looks like the kid that sat at the table that of all the cool kids that didn't let anyone else in. Yeah, Stamos is the cool kid that would ever now and then stop by our table and say hi to us. Okay. That's my that's my thought on it. I, in a lot of ways, they are interchangeable. I think they both can pull off Uncle Jesse, but I think uh, I would have a hard time seeing Rob Lowe pull off Uncle Jesse without him being as goofy as right. he was. At and, 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 and maybe a lot of this is is the stuff that there's coming out now. Like there's a show on uh, on Disney Plus called Big Shot. And John Stamos is playing a disgraced I'm college more basketball. Serious. Coach. Yeah, it's got it's got some serious seriousness to it, but it's also really got a lot of comedy in it. Yeah, Rob Lowe could totally do that. Like, I mean, you could have put Rob Lowe in that part, not noticed. And then Rob Lowe had this had this show that was on for like two episodes, where he played a TV lawyer who mm. had like the show got canceled. He moved home, was living with his brother Fred Fred Savage. Mm who was an actual lawyer and like he would try to be in the, like it was pretty awful. Um, and actually, no, it was pretty it was entertaining, but no one else watched it but me. It had one viewer, Clint Clark, and that was That's it. Right. <laughs> and apparently they won't uh, pay Lob Lowe to entertain me. Um, well, now I think, now that I think about it, you know, Stamos was on, I was a big ER fan. And Stamos had a stint on ER where he played a pretty boy, doctor kind of a womanizer sort of sort of guy i mean he wasn't like a bad guy but he was uh had a little bit of arrogance to him and i i could see either one of them playing that role for sure yeah. and to me he he may have got so you may be right there well it, and the biggest you may have convinced me you may convince me the biggest argument that i heard against it um and i have not seen this show so i can't tell you uh, was that Rob Lowe, he, that Stamos could not have played Rob Lowe's part on the West Wing. 
And I haven't ever seen one episode. I never watched that either. And I'm not going to. So, all right, yeah. whatever. I don't care. Stamos could have done but, it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Thinking about Stamos on the yard, though, I think. Okay. All right. Your All right. Turn. So here's my here's my first one. Ready? Mine. Right. Mine is a sports I'm ready. one. I'm, I'm Mine's ready. a sports one. I won't. And this one you may you may agree with, and you may not. Okay. One of the worries in football is injuries. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and one of the ways to try to curtail that is they have hit less in practices. Correct. That's yeah. that's just a big thing, right? I mean they. <coughs> There's less and less hitting. If they do hit, they don't tackle to the ground anymore, hardly at all. I mean, rarely even most football teams, college, pro, whatever, don't tackle to the ground. I say that's one of the reasons that injuries are getting so much higher. And if they would go back to hitting on a regular basis, they would have less injuries in football instead of more. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you and disagree with you. I think it's a happy balancing act. Uh, there, there's no. I don't think this is one of the things. There's a right or wrong answer to. Um, you know, there, I mean, like you said, um, I've got. I we I've talked about this podcast where I played at Arkansas Tech. You know, and I was a bench warmer. I didn't play much, but I still got two screws holding this bicep onto this arm. Um. So. I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> I wasn't going to answer it in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> but, Don't do that. Uh, no, I'm not. Like, hello. Um, so we um... now here. Let me give you. Here, let me give you my argument yeah. for it. Here's my argument, and then this is where I think I'm going to convince you. This okay. is where I'm going to I'm going to grab Clint Clark, and you're going to ready. You're going to be ready to call your senator and and say that this needs that they need to have laws that this needs to happen when I convince you right here. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. Another way you uh, also participated athletically was in uh, professional wrestling, correct? Yes. Okay, now, when I say professional wrestling, you got paid to wrestle, although it wasn't very much money. And, and Like $20 and, was my biggest payday. That's right. But you went around, wild card, Colton Cash, you went around and you um, wrestled, right? Now, in order right. to do that, you had to train. What is the first lesson that Lynn Johnson taught you when you went out to train as a wrestler? How to bump. How to fall. Yeah. Right? Part of being tackled in football is learning how to take a tackle. And if the first time you're taking it, man, for some of these NFL guys, the first time they take a tackle is in a game where the other defender is trying to kill them. If you're taking a tackle in practice, you're going against somebody that's not necessarily trying to kill you because they're your friend, they're your teammate. Yeah. And your body can get used to taking the fall. Just like in wrestling, the reason you learn how to fall first is because you're a better wrestler. If you can take, you got to be able to take those falls because you're going to take them. And your body's got to get used to taking those things. If it doesn't, if you don't get used to it, right, you're, you're going to end up getting hurt if you just go out there and just do something. Matter of fact, one of the first times we got in the ring, me, you, and Paul went down to Lynn's house, and he wasn't there yet. Your brother Paul gave me a DDT. I didn't know how to take a DDT properly right? besides on like a, on a uh, trampoline. Well, those rings are a lot harder than a trampoline. They are. I went head first into that ring because your brother didn't let my head go. He didn't loosen up his grip as we went down. He tightened up. And so I couldn't pull my head out so that my head didn't hit the boards. I went head first into the ground. I couldn't move for like 30 seconds. I just laid there. I couldn't move. And then I rolled off the and, and had to like gain my composure, right? I didn't know how to take that bump. And in football, you got to know how to take a hit. Your body, your knees have to get used to taking the hits that they take. And I think they would lower injuries. Matter of fact, if you, and here's, this is a crazy one. You're probably, you're definitely going to disagree with me. And this is one I know is never going to happen. 
you want to get rid of and, and cut down on CTE and concussions, get rid of the face mask. Yeah. No, you've mentioned that. I, I, I just. I it's never going to happen. It's never no, gonna it's never going to happen. Gonna but um, if you got to worry about your nose getting broke, guys won't leave with their head. I'm not going to agree with you, and I'm not going to disagree with you on this one. I just think you got to find that happy medium, and it's yeah. hard to do. It is yeah. hard because you do – you want to calcify your body and get yourself ready to take it, but you also want to keep guys, not hurt them in practice. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's a delicate, a delicate balancing act. All right. But, now, but watching the NFL and watch how many and, – and, and in NCAA, watch how many great players that – Coaches handle with, with, with soft hands. Them kids' end gloves. Up, kids' gloves end up getting hurt the first game because they haven't been used to taking hits. Sorry, just just watch that when football season comes around. All right, go ahead, Clint. You ready? Next one. I'm ready. Van Hagar is better than Van Halen. What's up, y'all? I said it. I like Sammy Hagar. Better than David Lee Roth. No regrets. No regrets. When I said the idea for this podcast, I knew I wanted to say this. I prefer Van Hagar over Van Halen. What's up? Are we still friends, Travis? (laughs) Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Did you just say? I am. All right. Jump. What do you got? Okay. Now, now let me pr- let me. Panama. Pr- what do you got? Listen. Hot for teacher. What do you got? Come on. Look, I, maybe huh? I maybe I uh, say this because like my two or three favorite right now. Stretchy pants, colorful stretchy pants. What do you got? Right, right now is my favorite Van Halen song, Van Halen song, which is a Van Hagar song, which is Sammy Hagar. Dude, and, and don't get wrong, it's hard to beat Diamond Dave as a front man. Like, that's the guy you want front in your band. And it, God, I mean, it's, it's, it's delicate. But like right now, uh, Why Can't This Be Love, my two favorite Van Halen song. And they're both fronted by Sammy Hagar. No, the overall body of work, you know, Diamond Dave is better, but uh, it that, has more hits. But that I'll 1984 like album with the angel smoking a cigarette. I mean, come on, Clint. I'm sorry. It's how I mean, it's it's just, you know, and, and I know it's controversial. I know people are going to right now was over commercialized because it was used in a ton of commercials. Yeah, I think it was a Pepsi okay. commercial. And- <laughs> Yeah, I was using or, commercials. Or high school used basketball like, team, they came out to it. Um, yeah, the, like like sports, you know, like highlights at the end of the season. Right now. It's it's on my workout Couch playlist. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, look, I like Hagar's voice. Yeah. But there was just something magic about that 84 album, man. That's one of the best albums ever. Um, and, look, I'm not a – everything in the 80s is the greatest ever. Okay? I, right. I could, you know, an unpopular opinion, I could probably say that I like 90s music better than 80s music, okay? But I like the 80s music, too. I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, stringent on that. But that 84, gosh, dude. By, by the way, on Lithium, all, which is a Sirius XM channel, all Memorial Day weekend, they were playing the top 100 alt rocks, grunge songs of all time. Do you yeah. want to take any guess what number one was? It smells like Teen Spirit. Oh, yeah. It's like <laughs> like they played a Third Eye Blind song, and David Cross was hosting it. He goes, yeah. well, number 100, that was Smell Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. He goes, I thought that'd be a lot higher. And it was a Third Eye Blind song. <laughs> and so, like, ever so often, like, they'd go, like, number 87. Like, they didn't even insult their intelligence. Everybody knew Smells Like Teen Spirit was going to be number one. <laughs> and he, he kept joking about it. And then, like, oh, yeah. every song was about Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. Um, he's like, you ought nice. to know about Lennis Morissette. A lot of people think that song's about Dave Coulier, but it was actually about Ryan Seacrest. Nice. <laughs> so I was like, he, <laughs> he was a good guy to host it, but, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, right. my, that's my personal favorite. And maybe it's because, you know, I kind of 
my teenage years was in the nineties and yeah. during the teenage years, you know, Hagar was fronting Van Halen. Yeah. They did a really funny cause they actually, when they were both gone from Van Hagar or Van Halen, um, they went on tour together and they were alternating when they would close. Like one night Hagar would close the next night, David Lee Roth would close and they were on a, on a, on Howard Stern back when Howard Stern would come on E and uh, David Lee Roth goes, Sammy, you just don't get it. Do you Sammy? And he's like, what? He goes, you, it's not that one version of Van Halen's better than the other. Sammy is that I'm better than you. <laughs> Which is a total David Lee Roth. I mean, yeah. David Lee Roth would do a concert wearing a David Lee Roth t-shirt. Yeah, he did yeah. David Lee Roth. Yeah. He's, I just like, I like Hagar's music better than I like David Lee Roth. But David Lee Roth is the is is what you have in mind when you want a front man for a band. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. go ahead, Travis. All right. Here's my next one. And this one has to do with sort of Razorback Sports, but a little different. Okay. Clint, and you and you may did I don't know. I don't know on this one. I think you may disagree with me. I like the answer shot jerseys. You do too. I I like them. I, I'm sorry. That you talking about like the gray jerseys that Arkansas wears? Yeah, like the charcoal gray. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. But the, a third option, a dark colored option. I yeah. like. You know, I, I think if they people, if they would have went with black, I'd have been okay with that. But I I like like the old school hats. You know, and I'm pretty old school on stuff. Okay, but a lot of them don't like them. They think our colors are are you know. Cardinal and white, and that's that's our colors. Our cardinals aren't anthracite, and I understand because we had uh, some bad games in those, right? Yeah. But and they say, well, Alabama doesn't have to have a third color. We're not Alabama. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not Alabama. And you know yeah, what? Yeah. Go ahead. And a lot of these teams will experiment with different types of uniforms and different this and that. You know, yeah. and, and it's it is what it is. Like people, there are people that gripe about the the forward facing hog. Yeah, I personally, I mean this this is the Razorback, yeah. but I, I like the forward facing hog. There's a lot of things. There's just on some things, yeah. Like I like it on the chest on some of the jerseys. Um, I think it looks all right. I prefer the one like what well, you have on your hat, but yeah, I mean, I do. I wouldn't want the the forward facing hog on the side of a helmet or anything. Yeah, and I'm and I'm all for keeping the helmet just with the hog on the helmet. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine if you go different colors with the helmet. You know, I like I'd be fine with a extra side helmet, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um I mean, but here's the most important thing, Clint. The players love it. Yeah. That that's what that matters. I mean doing something different to get a recruit in the door you got to do something different than what Nick Saban does. And you may uh, say, well, who cares about its clothes? You haven't been around teenagers very often. Find a teenager with some, with some leather sneakers and watch the way they walk because they don't want to crease their sneakers. You know, I remember it was funny on uh, Instagram. I saw an interview with uh, Anna Kendrick one time. And someone had given her like some rare Jordan, like leather sneakers. And she posted a picture of her like squatting down, you know, and like, oh, and the sneak with the sneakers, you know, she's got them, they're bent. And like, she got all kinds of hate responses because she was creasing this, <laughs> those expensive sneakers, you know, like they're meant to walk in. Yeah. But then like, I had, I'd have kids come to my church as a youth minister and they'd be walking all straight legged. Like they wouldn't bend their knees because they were afraid of creasing their leather sneakers because they had spent, you know, a lot of money on these leather sneakers to you know, look good. Kids care about that. They, they yeah. want to look good when they're out there. And if anything you can do to build camaraderie, anything you can do to build that on your team, and if they're excited about the way a jersey looks, man, so be it. I mean, don't change them crazily. But here's the other thing, okay? I don't know if you remember, for those that say, well, Alabama didn't have to change theirs or whatever. Well, Bielema tried to make us look like Alabama, if you remember. 
Yeah. That we played them when we wore the 64 throwback uniforms. He even had Alex Collins tape his hair up just like Derrick Henry taped his hair up with black athletic tape that game, even though Alex Collins was suspended for the first half. But all the other players that had long hair, he had them tape it up. Now, we played Alabama very good in that game. Yeah. But I think Brad Bielema was trying to fire them up by saying, look, we're the new Alabama. We're gonna, we're here to take over. I, I like the exercise jerseys. I think they're wonderful. Um, I would, you know, I'm not for wearing them every game, but I like having that third dark color. Like I wouldn't mind if some, you had some exercise highlights in the regular jerseys here and there. I don't mind it. I'm sorry. People, you no, can I hate agree me. With you. I agree there's with a, you. That, well, there's a lot of people that watch this, I, or, or a lot of the ones that watch this are probably going to say, how dare you, you know. But Well, they probably turned it off after I said Van Hagar was better than Van Hagar. That's true, yeah. That's the way um, they should. Well, you know, the, the only uniforms i ever seen, I'm like, don't ever wear those again, was a few years ago we wore the – the Dallas Cowboy Razorback mash. That was horrible. Yeah. It looked like it looked like Ohio State with a Razorback on the side of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I get you're trying to pay pay tribute to Jerry Jones. Yeah. Uh, now now on the next one, Travis, I actually literally changed this one while we were sitting here talking. I okay. had one way I was going and I went completely different. Okay. George Clooney would have been a good Batman. If he was in a better movie, he's got the suaveness to pull it off. I mean, all wrong. He was in a terrible, terrible movie. He was, but I, I don't think he would have been. I still think he's Batman. He's he's, he's kind of that. He's sort of a uh, uh, a sort of a self reflective type of guy. And he's not a he's not a uh, uh, he's not he's not a muscle bound. I mean, yeah. you, you, Batman needs to be you know have a little muscle on him. You know, at least a guy that looks like he can hold his own without the suit. Um, yeah. And Clooney just doesn't look like it. Clooney looks like I guess once again I'm an ER fan. He looks like a doctor to me. You know, he, he looks like more of a doctor than a... See, now my other Batman, and I had thoughts this too. Like, literally, I sit here and changed it as we were, as as yeah. we were sitting. The other, the, my other take on Batman, too, when we're on it, I think a lot of the hate off Affleck is is unnecessary. I think Ben Affleck was great as Batman. Um, I think he was. I thought he did a good job, too. I mean, yeah. it, it was just, look, it's, I mean, to me... You got to think about it. Christian Bale to me is hands down the best Batman. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people old school. They're like Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Keaton was great, uh, but I'd honestly put Affleck number two because it was just it was hard coming off that. It was a completely different movie. It's supposed to be kind of an older guy who was kind of like the guy playing him. And I thought Affleck played it perfect. Played it perfect. No, I thought Affleck did good. I think Affleck suffered from. They were being compared to Marvel movies. Yeah. Oh man. He was being compared to Iron Man. And Iron Man, you know, it just can't beat him. Well, you if know. there's one superhero that was born to play a part, oh yeah. One guy that if you think about it, like you could you could replace about any other, you could take this guy out, put this guy in, and they could no one else could have played Tony Stark but Robert Downey Jr. No. Nobody. No. No, uh, I think they said the second choice was. Um, I'm brain farting on his name. He was in one of the movies. Well, I'm gonna have to Google it now. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up. But I. So. Trying to think. I, yeah, I'm trying to remember. There was someone that was. Uh, yeah, because he was actually in the. He was actually in that, and this is this is the this is the problem with changing your um, changing what you're going over. Sam Rockwell. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was and he would he was in he was in two. Yeah, he was in two, and he just he couldn't. Have, no one else could have. Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. 
Yeah. Um, and, I like yeah. Sam Rockwell, but I don't like him in movies like that. No, I, and I don't think he could have pulled it off. He, he's not as athletic looking as Downey. I'll tell you a great movie. Uh, Sam Rockwell plays just kind of a goofball guy, but um, a great movie that's not talked about a lot is uh, The Way, Way Back. I haven't seen it. It's got uh, Steve Carell in it. Um, he plays like a jerk stepdad. It's about the, uh, Steve Carell, and it has a uh, a big what's the big um, uh, big old car station wagon that has the seat in the back. I have seen it. It's been a long time ago. That seat's called the way way back, right? Yeah. Anyway, it's about this kid that's kind of awkward kid goes to uh, like a lake community for the summer and uh sam rockwell runs a water park and that kind of brings that kid under his wing anyway it's a really good movie kind of a, uh, just a neat neat movie anyway all right here's mine you ready ready not my last the last one i have and i've got one more clint emojis are stupid i refuse to use emojis I have never, ever used an emoji. That's because you don't have a significant I, other to send her a kiss and, in the face. And I will not use an emoji. I use emojis all the time. I love I, emojis. I, I think I don't, I don't like them. I think they're pointless. I think, I think less of people that use them. Sorry. <laughs> you sound like a crouchy old man. You sound like, like, Dude, like these kids with these yeah. emojis. Those, you kids with your stupid emojis. They're, How dare you? They're out there using emojis and skateboarding down the sidewalk. That's that right. it. That's, that right. it. That's who I am with emojis. Like, like my them. youth, my youth group, like would, like some, like if one of them got talking about emojis or something, and they would. Be like, oh yeah, Travis hates emojis. They would just send me like pages of emojis on text messages. And I just, you're all the devil. You're all, you're all bad. Yeah. But yeah, you I know, don't like them. I don't like them. I don't use I, them. I, I can tell you, and I, I let my, and I made the mistake of letting my ex-wife know how much this bothers me. And, and Anna knows if I ever, if I'm ever mad and I respond with this, like I'm done with the conversation, I hate just getting a thumbs up. Yeah. I'm just like, I just want to go, I'm going to come over there to wherever you are. I get like Liam Neeson in in the uh, in like taking like I don't know who you are, yeah. but I will hunt you down. I will <laughs> find you. <laughs> I have a special set of skills. <laughs> like, I'm like, like don't do it. thumbs up. So if I'm ever like mad and I just send a thumbs up, he's like, oh, he's mad. Yeah. So you, just so you know, if you ever get a thumbs up for me, this conversation's over, and I'm angry. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't do I don't do the. I don't, I hate that one, but no, I use emojis all the time. The laughing emojis, the like, I'm sorry. If I'm laughing, Tears. I write ha ha. Yeah. It's that easy. You, you sorry. sound like a crowd. Did you remember they had that? Um, I don't even remember what the commercial was for. It was, but it had Coach Krzyzewski in it. Coach K. Coach K. Yeah, Coach Krzyzewski. He was in it. And he's like, hey, tell him that I said he looked really good on the boards. He needs to work on this or something like that. And yeah. the guy just sent a bunch of random emojis, yeah. like a fire and like a fist. And that may be part of it is I don't know what half of them mean. Yeah, I don't. I just thought, like, yeah. Okay. All right. What's you your last one? The final one. And I know you're going to disagree with them, but I'm also going to tell the story about how the first time I saw this movie was, I believe, Warrior, the movie Warrior. Have you seen it? I don't know. It is it, it's the MMA fighting movie. It's got Tom Hardy, Joe Edgerton. Oh no, I haven't seen it. Oh, I've got it on Blu-ray. Um, I'll have to loan it to you. It's also on Amazon Prime. To me, from the money, it is the best sports movie ever made. I like it better than any Rocky. I like it better than Creed. I like it better than the program. I like it better than Bull Durham, than Field of Dreams. It to me for my money, pound for pound, best sports movie ever made. Now I want to tell you about the first time I watched this movie. I, before I started my current job, I managed movie theaters. I did that for 
almost 10 years. I'd want a trip to CinemaCon, which is the big movie theaters owners convention um, for selling gift cards, something like that. So I want this all expense paid trip to, to Las Vegas for CinemaCon. They put us up in Caesar's Palace. Um, you know, everything was just, it was really cool. So they were doing a special show, a screening of Warrior that night. They hadn't even released the trailer to the movie. Yeah. And now I don't want to talk too much about it because now I feel like I'm spoiling it for you. I mean, the movie's only 15 years old. Yeah. Nick Nolte is phenomenal in the movie. Nick Nolte was nominated for an Oscar. Completely, completely deserved it. Um, yeah. So that is my sports take. Uh, Warrior is the best sports movie ever made. And that's a tough one, of- Clint, because, man, like, even above Rudy. I'd put it above Rudy. Above... Sandlot. Sandlot? Now, one of these days, we'll, we'll do our, you know, like our top five favorite sports movies, I'm sure. But dude, that's a that's a big – that's a big jump, dude. It, it is it To is say really it's good. better than that. And it's an MMA movie. It's an MMA movie. And maybe one but, hasn't seen it because I'm not yeah. well, an MMA guy like you are. But I, I enjoy it. But it's they, – they spoil it in the trailer. Like I said – so Kurt Angle plays like this unbeatable Russian fighter. Um, probably he probably uh, Fedor back in the day. Yeah. Um, so he's playing basically Fedor. He's coming over to doing this tournament. They're doing a Grand Prix style one night tournament. And so Joe Edgerton's uh, playing the older brother, and then Tom Hardy's his younger brother. They give away in the the trailer. They fight in the end. But I hadn't seen the trailer when I watched it. And uh, and so the the brother who's kind of a mar- not the best fighter in the world, it's kind of he fights Kurt Angle in the semifinals, and he ends up beating Kurt Angle. Spoiler alert! Um, so, but they I didn't even know. Like I'm like, oh my god! It, like you're literally when you're watching it, you know, before you see the trailer, like I'm worried about this guy's safety. Yeah, he's a family man. You know, I'm like, it's just it is. Uh, but anyway, I, those are definitely some controversial subjects. Uh, it's yeah, unpopular. I'm, want, I'm, want, I'm wanting to get rid of. Uh, I'm wanting to add more tackling to football, more tackling to practice. Make it happen. Get rid of the face mask. Keep and everybody will be safer. Everybody will be safer. Yeah, you need to. We also need to uh, just one week in big shot. And every time it's on, I'm like, Judge Stamos is the big shot. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to watch his rose her eyes like, ah, you <laughs> idiot. But <laughs> maybe one of these days they can just put Rob Lowe in there and see if anybody notices it. That's right. No one will notice it. <laughs> no, like, no one will notice no except for notice. the Except for Stamos' mullet. Now, I do have a question for you, Big T. I was going to ask you this earlier, and then you kind of segue into this. Uh, as we start wrapping up, as you know, we have the 100-pound weight loss challenge. Yeah, I'm down about. Depends on the day, a little over 20 pounds, you know, like a little over 20 pounds, 25 or so. so. 25 or so. So, yeah, almost a quarter of the way there. I've been kind of steady there, though. I, I've got a plateau and I need to. Yeah, the plateaus to, are hard. So, you know, and even, now, it, it, even now, as much weight as I lost, I still I still hit them. Yeah. Um, I ate so bad over Labor Day, I mean, over Memorial Day weekend and the weekend before that at my cousin's in Memphis. Yeah. Um, and I'm going on vacation next week, so it's not going to be. It, um, it's gonna you gotta get be, you some good seafood down there. Gonna get me some good seafood. We're gonna. I'm gonna shoot the pot, record the podcast from the beach. Um, I will. I will have a mustache next week. I call it the vacation mustache. All uh, right. Yeah. So okay. you viewers get that to look forward to. So I have to do it now, unless I mess up while I'm making it. That's right. So. Uh, oh well. Yeah. So we do. So. Uh, well, listen, folks. We want y'all to. Um, to like and share this podcast, to uh, let us know what are what are your unpopular opinions. Uh, you you know, we could, we, we could, opinions? I don't care. We could have went on low hanging fruit with pineapple doesn't belong on pizza and, and stuff like that, but yeah, we went with some other deeper stuff, some deeper dives here. So, um, so tell us what you think. Tell us if we're, how stupid we are. Tell them. Go ahead, argue with me about the the football hitting thing. I'm going to win that argument. 
because I'm right. I'm correct. It's just the way it is. Tell Clint how dumb he is about the Hagar thing. David Lee Ross the best. He's just stupid. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, now we, we all we all have some unpopular opinions, right? So tell us what some of yours are. Maybe we there's some that y'all you put that we may want to talk about later. So um, like, share, uh, subscribe on um, on the old YouTube. Uh, share this on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those different places. We'll be uh, sharing links to it on there. Uh, listen, Clint, man, it's been good. Next week, you'll be down in – where y'all going? We're going to Galveston. Going to Galveston. Glenn, yeah. Insert Glenn Campbell song here. All right, man. Heading down to Galveston. Headed down to Galveston. All right, bud. We'll have a good week down there. Uh, have a good time. We'll be look forward to uh, seeing you there on the beach, uh, uh, having a relaxing time away from the old grind. And uh, don't forget, check out our boy Sean Michelle. Check out Hometown Roofing for your roofing needs. You can find them on Facebook. Uh, Robert will be happy to come and look at your roof and see if you uh, need some help on it and work we'll with bring you a that. tea. Just let him on your bring, roof. Let him know you want a sweet or unsweet tea. Yeah, just uh, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll stop on. by. He'll probably bring you McDonald's for breakfast. Who knows? <laughs> you never know. You never know. He's a good guy. He is a good All guy. All right, Clint. Well, man, have a good week. Go Hogs. Woo pig. Let's win this regional. Get that super regional started here and ready to roll. It is, uh, that's how we do. And we out. Sweat, work, filthy, dirt, harvest, hurt, kingdom come. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more till I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers breaking up hard drive So I can sow the seed in a friend of no accent pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead